Intro to Waves. Not everything in animation that moves is a character. Effects animation treats the motion of water, smoke, fabric, hair, uh, so forth. In the 1930s, some animators started to specialize in effects animation. Walt Disney had a staff of effects animators on Snow White, and Disney's effects department expanded quickly creating many of the memorable scenes in Fantasia. Waves are an example of effects animation. There's many different kinds of waves, such as water waves on the ocean and ripple waves on fabric. You can also create a wave pulse by flicking a rope or a whip. And then there's sound waves, which are invisible, but they're waves nonetheless. In effects animation, the most important types of waves are water waves. Here you see two examples of water waves, uh, small scale ripples in a scene from uh, Kung Fu Panda 2, and uh, large ocean waves in Kubo and the Two Strings. Uh, waves are also important in character effects animation. Uh, for example, we see rippling waves in Fiona's hair and in the fabric of Hiccup's uh, wingsuit. Now there's two basic types of waves. The first type is a transverse wave. In a transverse wave, you have the motion of the material being perpendicular to the motion of the wave. Uh, for example, as uh, Luxo Jr. is hopping, there's a transverse wave pulse that travels down the cord. Here's a quick video that shows transverse waves traveling down a slinky. You see the motion of the material is up and down. On the other hand, the wave is traveling first to the right and then reflects and travels uh, to the left. Again, for a transverse wave, the material motion is perpendicular to the wave motion. Surface water waves are also transverse waves. The water moves up and down as the wave travels horizontally. Yet another example of a transverse wave is a crowd doing uh, the wave. This example emphasizes the fact that the material is not traveling with the wave. The people just stand up and down. They're not running down the aisles. They basically stay in place as the wave travels down the length of the stadium. Another example of a transverse wave is a flag cycle, which is a common animation exercise. This type of wave is typically seen in the animation of fabric and clothing. Now there's a second category of waves called longitudinal waves. For these, the wave motion and the material motion are parallel. If you pull and push on a spring, you pulse longitudinal waves. A crowd could make longitudinal waves by swinging from side to side while sitting in their seats instead of uh, standing up and down. Uh, this would probably look kind of stupid. Uh, here's an example for a slinky creating a longitudinal wave. Uh, you see the wave travels down the slinky as a compression pulse. Here's an animation that shows both transverse and longitudinal waves. Again, the only difference is whether the material motion is perpendicular or parallel to the wave motion. An important example of longitudinal waves are sound waves. We can't see these waves, but our ears are sensitive to the material motion. If you could see the air molecules, then sound waves would look something like they do in this animation. On screen left, there's a plate which is pushing then pulling back, sort of like a vibrating drum head. The air molecules move from side to side and this disturbance travels as a sound wave down the pipe. Now you want to be careful to distinguish the difference between waves 
and actual flow of material. For waves, the material oscillates in place as the wave moves. However, when you have flow, that's when the material itself is moving. Uh, for example, when you're speaking, the sound travels as waves. On the other hand, if you blow out a candle, then the air travels out of your mouth and actually flows away from you to reach the candles. Uh, wind is a good example of flow. Um, and notice that flow is usually much slower than waves. For example, even in a hurricane, the wind speed is typically under 150 miles per hour. On the other hand, the speed of sound waves is around 750 miles per hour. That is about five times faster than hurricane winds. Smoke rings are another example of flow. Uh, you can see the smoke rings coming out of this cannon. Uh, they travel fast, but not nearly as fast as sound. Uh, you know this is flow because you see the smoke coming out of the cannon and moving inside of the smoke ring. One of the main properties of a wave is the amplitude of the wave. Here uh, you see the amplitude for a transverse wave, and it's similar for a longitudinal wave. Uh, the amplitude is the measure of the material displacement from the apex to the center. Uh, notice that this is the same definition of amplitude used for basic oscillations, uh, such as the swinging motion of a pendulum. With sound, the amplitude is indicated to us by the loudness of the sound. Uh, that is, the louder the sound, the larger the amplitude of the sound waves. While the density and pressure variations are exaggerated in this uh, cartoon, it gives you a basic idea of what's meant by amplitude for a longitudinal sound wave. For surface water waves, the amplitude could be measured as the height of the waves in feet. Uh, it's also common to measure wave amplitude uh, using a scale. Uh, for example, the Beaufort scale is used for ocean waves. On the Beaufort scale, a zero is a flat sea, while in high seas, uh, such as in a typhoon, it goes all the way up to 12. Sound wave amplitude is usually expressed in terms of a loudness measured in decibels. Uh, this is a logarithmic scale, since our perception of loudness varies logarithmically. Uh, the scale is calibrated so that zero decibels is the threshold of hearing for an average uh, young adult. The scale tops out around 170 decibels when the sound wave starts creating pockets of vacuum. Uh, the Richter scale for earthquakes is based on the amplitude of seismic waves. Uh, as with the decibel scale, it's logarithmic, with wave amplitude increasing by a factor of 10 for each level up the Richter scale. So uh, with the Richter scale, every time we go up by one notch, uh, for example from magnitude 6 earthquake to magnitude 7 earthquake, the amplitude of the ground motion goes up by a factor of 10. So in uh, summary, uh, for transverse waves, the material motion is perpendicular to the wave's motion. For longitudinal waves, the material motion is parallel to the wave's motion. For waves, the material oscillates in place, uh, but for flow, uh, such as wind, for example, the material moves along with the flow. The amplitude of a wave is determined by the displacement of the material as it oscillates. And there's various scales for wave amplitude, such as the decibel scale for sound. In the next video, we'll look at some other wave properties, such as wavelength and frequency. See you then.